This is Seven National News and in our top story, Abu Dhabi's development in various sectors, particularly in real estate, is among the highlights of this year's cityscape. From the capital's announcement of resuming projects that were put on hold back in 2011, to the green light on the Louvre and the Guggenheim Museums, as well as the 2016 opening of the new terminal in Abu Dhabi International Airport, the future is looking bright. His Highness Sheikh Hazza bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Vice Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council, Council, graced the opening of the sixth cityscape. He toured the exhibition and visited landmark developments and projects in the capital. Among these include the progress at Sadiat Island's developments, the nation towers, which will open in August this year, as well as Mabadla's projects. As the event grows from strength to strength, the achievements of UAE-based companies are also being showcased. Al Mabar, a partnership between Abu Dhabi's six leading real estate and investment powerhouses, features key achievements and flagship projects. These include Bab al-Baha in Morocco, St. Regis in Amman and Master Zayed in Akbar, which was named after the UAE's late president. According to company officials, these reflect the UAE's capacity in contributing to the development of other countries that goes beyond building and investments. All our projects are for a span of, of, uh, of, of many years. We go there in any country to add value to that country and to transfer technology, heritage, all these things. You know, so it is not just about buildings. It is about cultures. It is about, uh, you know, communicating, understanding people over there, getting to know people and getting to know Abu Dhabi outside. In addition to the properties and projects showcased, corporate and leisure projects are also being featured, such as Wadi Adventure in Alain. The first man-made whitewater rafting, kayaking and surfing facility in the Middle East is the latest addition to the capital's host of tourism attractions. More announcements for up-and-coming projects and partnerships are expected during the four-day event. Interesting times ahead for Abu Dhabi, more supply to come on and, and likely to be more softening of rents. But at the same time, there is a market there to, 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 to lease buildings to tenants at, at the right rental level, which is all important at the moment. Um, in terms of Dubai, um, we started to see some sort of very small increases in, in residential and, and um, or certainly residential prices and, and, and also rentals uh, for the right location. It's not a widespread phenomena, but certainly... Um, for, for some of the locations in the marina and Emirates Living and Arabian Ranches in Dubai, we've started to see some very small increases in freehold and, and rental prices, which is very encouraging, you know, given the sort of three or four years that we've been through. That's not to say that the sector is out of the woods yet. Meanwhile, Piscine at Middle East opened today in the capital alongside Cityscape. The swimming pool and spa event, based in France, held its inaugural show in the capital to tap into the region's rising demand, as well as the growing real estate sector. With 25,000 participants in attendance, organisers say they are confident of the region's market, as well as the project's viability. We started first edition in Abu Dhabi uh, with our partner Cityscape because Cityscape is bringing a high range of uh, visitors like uh, architects and developers who need uh, swimming pool equipment for their amenities and facilities. The real estate uh, keeps on growing in this region and also because people want more and more their own swimming pools. This is very important uh, also uh, for the children, for the family. It's a good moment to have around the swimming pool. So I'm very confident that the market is very good and will keep on growing. With the aim of strengthening the culture of endowment within the Islamic society, the Al-Kaf and Miners Affairs Foundation hosted the Dubai International Conference today. Now in its third year, the event was inaugurated by His Highness Sheikh Majid bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the chairman of the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority, in the presence of international thought leaders and endowment experts. The two-day event will focus on best practices and experiences in Al-Kaf funds and will provide a platform for speakers to share knowledge of the latest endowment trends, policies and regulations worldwide. Over this year, we have seen um, quite uh, different interest and the most interesting part, I would say, is the participation now of some non-Islamic countries. So we have uh, Al-Kaf of New Zealand, is participating. We'll hear uh, 
the American experience, Austria. So we have new ideas, and I think Waqf itself will help actually integrate Muslims and show them in their own society as a, a productive uh, contributor to the well-being of a human wherever they are. Industry experts stress the benefits of Al-Kaf in all sectors, including education, health and righteousness and Islamic affairs. The foundation aims to enhance community services in addition to assisting individual members of the community. First of all, we would like to learn from their experience and would like them to learn from ours. Uh, as I said earlier, we are very unique in a setup, uh, mine, uh, Awqaf and Minor Affairs. We are the only organization uh, within the Islamic world that combines the two. And the reason for that, Sheikh Mohammed's vision was very clear. Awqaf is about investing funds, and orphans have funds that nobody can, is looking after. So we became the custodian of the funds of both, so, and we invest them. So at the end of the day, we are a trust. And our main responsibility is to invest both Awqaf funds and orphan funds. Orphan funds, of course, goes back into their accounts as profits. Awqaf goes into the community as support. The Emirate of Sharjah is looking to impose tighter security measures for its beaches following the drowning of two people last week. According to a local paper, police stated that flags will soon be raised to warn swimmers as to when it's safe to swim and that a proposal to build two watchtowers has been made to the Sharjah municipality to keep a watch on swimmers. They added that barriers will also be put into the water so that the public will have a limit as to where they can swim to. The proposals are currently in development and will be discussed with the Sharjah municipality as there are no safety precautions set at present. Over 4,000 people walked for a cause on Saturday afternoon with the aim to raise awareness on autism spectrum disorder. The UA community participated in the fourth edition of Walk for Autism in Dubai organised and supported by the UA Red Crescent and Dubai Healthcare City and is in line with the month-long international campaign to raise awareness on the disorder. Child Early Intervention Medical Centre, a provider of therapeutic, educational and family support services for the delayed, disabled or at-risk infants, hosted the two-kilometre walk, which featured health, educational and entertainment activities. Dr Hiba Shatta, the Managing Director and Co-Founder of the CEIMC, stressed that many UA residents are not aware of autism and it is the duty of healthcare professionals to educate the community and encourage encourage them to support individuals with the disorder. The Walk for Autism is an annual event. We hold it every year in April. April is Awareness Month for Autism and we have to do something to let people be more aware of autism. What are the signs? What is the importance of early intervention? So we can have um, the help that these children need um, effectively um, uh, within the community so that they can get integrated, they get included in mainstream schools, they get um, the support of the community. And our next five days, business news for you, so stay with us.